So, what's up, Brosif? Yeah, I'm just trying to find something. Oh. What is the something you're trying to find? One of the articles that I saved for this week, one of the only two articles that I saved for this week, was that uh, the creators, Hello Games, the creators of No Man's Sky, yep. had uh, uh, cryptically announced something on Twitter. Let's see if I can find the. Besides the the new the new expansion that it just announced. Well, that's what I was trying to read uh, read about to see if that was the. Uh, that was the what the cryptic uh, tweet was about because uh, uh, yeah apparently on July 15th he the uh, what was his name Sean Murray Sean Murray yeah of uh, Hello Games uh, tweeted uh, he quote tweeted the next day with three more earth emojis so uh, an earth emoji so people were speculating whether it is uh, and that's what I was reading about whether it was about the uh, the new the, the the patch new patch for No Man's Sky which adds uh, a bunch of stuff uh, I saw a little bit of video about it uh, earlier today World's uh, Part 1 World's Part 1 uh, the little video that I, I watched he did like apparently a whole thing going over like all the changes like it's a huge update to the uh, to the game yeah they do that every year they have one giant fucking update they just drop down uh, and apparently they do resets too every once in a while like apparently that just resets everybody's stuff uh, but they usually give people like heads up of like hey this is going to reset a bunch of stuff I imagine it, it, not reading much more into to what the reset means it probably means something like uh, what Bungie does where it's just like okay now you know this plant is worth something and, and that's how you upgrade stuff I don't know yeah probably uh but I couldn't quite find uh, any link between it, but the people were also speculating that uh, it's could be, and it, it kind of makes sense, they're, they're working on another game called Light No Fire, and it's supposed to be an, a fantasy MMO. Yeah, they, that, they announced it at uh, what would have been E3. <laughs> yeah, so that was a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? Uh, a couple months ago, yeah. That was a couple months ago. Uh that apparently Light No Fire is a MMO that will take place in a world the size of Earth. So it kind of makes sense with uh, posting an emoji of the Earth and you're developing a game that will have, you know, the land mass of the Earth in it. But I haven't been able to find out if they released any more information or whatnot. So that's what I was reading through to see if they had released anything else ah. within the time that I read the original article and now. But I couldn't find anything yet. But yeah, that's cool. It actually kind of makes me want to at least try. I've never... I think I've tried No Man's Sky once. And it just didn't hook me. But that was like super early as well. Yeah. I played quite a bit of it when it first came out, and it was just, it was very monotonous, because it's, like, heavy on having to do a lot of things that, like, I'm not one of those, like, I need to, like, do every little, like, I need all these little things to have to do this one thing. I'm like, nah, I just need, like, simplicity, but, like, funness, you but know? But there was no story with it as well, was, was mm -hmm. there? Like, if I recall right, when I tried it, it was, like, you you were introduced to the basics of the game when your ship crashes on a planet. Yeah. And your first goal is to collect stuff to fix your ship. Yeah. And I think, I don't even remember, I don't even, I didn't even get enough stuff to, to fix the ship. I was just kind of like, this is it. I'm kind of bored already. Yeah, it's so very, knowing it's... that there was no, you know, I, there was no goal. I wasn't playing to anything to save the galaxy or anything like that. Uh, so I kind of gave up on it right away. Yeah, uh, same. Uh, it wasn't really much of... It wasn't my flavor of tea, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, but they did add, like, a bunch of years later... I say a bunch of years later, but a 
handful of years later or whatever, they added a mode where it was like less of that. Like you basically like jump past that. Like you don't have to do like the resource gathering. It's more of just like the adventuring. Uh, but even then it's just like, there's not much more to it. Like you're not, there's no adversaries, you know, you're not like pumping out fucking guns to shoot alien creatures or other people. It's just like, you're just going around to explore. I'm like, mm, okay. And to me, exploring is fun up to a certain point, and then it just I need a a reason for doing stuff for logging on. And, yeah. And I'm a space nerd. I love that type of stuff, but I just yeah, I can't log into something just to to randomly go explore stuff, and then just be like, okay, that was a perfect uh, thing to to waste a couple of hours on. Yeah. I want some story. I want some intrigue. I don't yeah. want to just fly around like I want to try it again just because I know it, it, it's you know be able to just take off from a, the surface of a world and travel into space and travel into another world but then when all that that there is yeah yeah it's bored yeah boring. I agree but anyway so yeah that's what I was trying to read about to see if there's anything else the light no fire thing seems from the little bit that I learned about it uh, seems kind of cool, especially if it is, you know, truly something that uh, is, takes place on a world that there's the size of Earth and can maybe be populated similarly. You know, yeah, it kind of sucked to sit there and say, yeah, we have a, you know, your map is the size of Earth, but it's empty. So it'll be interesting to see more about that. Uh, Kotaku has a thing about No Man's Sky's update. Yeah, what do they say? Um, so, a a cavalcade of free updates conclude or continues to transform the game from what it once was at launch, and the latest of those is no different today. Hello Games revealed Worlds Part One. A complete overhaul of planetary weather that's dropping alongside a major balancing patch and new expansion or new ex- expeditions that will see the community collectively fight against a threat of alien bugs. Anyone uh, else ready to uh, for some No Man's Sky Hell Divers? It says instead of a universal reset, as uh, some predicted, Hello Games is calling this a universal refresh uh here's a summary of some of the major changes uh to how no man's skies will generate planets and what players experience will uh, on them new water technology for waves and reflections uh waves are dynamic and will uh react to wind ships can land on water okay um, new cloud tech f- uh, for detailed skies in changing weather conditions. Um, volumetrics in atmosphere. I had to scroll past the ad. Volumetrics on uh, planet surfaces for rolling fog, rain, blizzards, lava sparks, and other phenomenon. Weather systems can interact with the, uh, and develop in real time as players explore. Um, besides overall... Um, uh, revolves around so the uh, new expansion that revolves around fighting alien bugs Maury describes it as starship troopers inspired Durr, and says players fight against these bugs across the new planets they explore will be uh, community driven so much like Helldivers and um, comes with new heavy armor mech that has a flamethrower for an arm yeah it's basically it's a it sounds like hell divers for sure. I mean, that's pretty cool though. Yeah. Um, sky and cloud rendering, water rendering. I'm just reading the bullet point or the main things. Mm-hmm. General engine improvements. Obviously, they need to do something that for the, if they're doing weather stuff. Um, deep learning super sampling is an NVIDIA technology available too. So they're putting DS, DLSS DLSS in. Or, I'm sorry, DLSS 3. Um, planetary variety. So they're adding more variety to the planets. Because that was one of the cool things is the fact that the planets are procedurally generated. 
So when you go to a new planet, it's like it's a, just a, a new dungeon. Uh, you go through a different f- flora and fauna. Um, so talk about planetary effects, creatures, a new type of uh, procedurally generated arthropod-style creature has been added and may appear on min- on any world. Uh, new types of procedurally generated plant and animal hi- uh, hybrids have been added. Interesting. New types, as you'll be able to get craftable uh, things from, I'm guessing, both flora and fauna from those hybrids. A new hype a new type of uh, hostile creature has been added, the brood mother. That sounds terrifying. Right. Uh, she protects her young. Uh, liquidators expansion or expedition will be shortly and run approximately six weeks. Also, it's in a limited time event. Uh, Twitch campaign, solar ship customization, the space station, so, uh, starship fabricator has been expanded to include the ability to craft solar class starships. Okay. Um, base parts, bug fixes, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so a lot of stuff. It's a very large uh, update, apparently. But that's what, I mean, it's called 5.0 for a reason. Right. <laughs> you know, it's like, you're not just going to call it 5.0 and do like a couple tweaks. You're definitely going to uh, do some major changes to it. Right. That's cool. Um, four days ago, Game Radar posted about Light No Fire. It says Sp- uh, sprawling survival game. Light No Fire is crazy ambitious. It says No Man's Sky's creator uh, Sean. Mer- of course, he's gonna say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's part of an ex- uh, exciting trend. It's a lot of s- it's a it's a lot for a small team. The Hello Games team is very very tiny for what they do. Mm-hmm. Um. That's also why they don't make multiple games. And it was a kind of a shock when they said, oh, hey, here's our new game. Everyone's like, wait, what? You haven't talked about a new game in like eight years? Yeah, it's shocking to, to hear how long ago uh, No Man's Sky was released. Yeah, uh, fucking a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It was one of those ones where the trailer made it look a lot more, uh, a lot more fun than it actually was. Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember being a little bit pumped about it, and then when it finally got released, it it's one of those. It was one of those games that uh, they were they hyped up a lot of stuff about it, and then when it was released, it was like, oh no, it, it has none of this stuff. But you know that stuff's coming soon. Yeah, I will give them credit definitely that they eventually did release some of, if not all, of the promised stuff for the game. Yeah, they released a lot of it. It's just you know, it took it took a while to get there. Um, and I I played several hours of it. And I tried to really get into it, but it was just like so monotonous. Of like, you go and you're landing, and you're like, oh, scan this and this and this, and I'm like, and that's it. Can I blow yeah. something up? Like, right. it's I cool. Shoot things? Can I do stuff? Like, yeah. is there a reason why I have photon cannons on the on the ship? You know? Yeah. It's, yeah. I was like, ah, I don't care anymore. Um, not a whole lot of any details in this article either. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So the only other article that I have here is something that, uh, you will be maybe not surprised about. Uh, and that is... The Halo TV show has been canceled. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I, I figured you'd be heartbroken over it. I have cried so much in the last cried few days so since much. I read about it. Um, I did see uh, uh, a, a comment. I think it was on the IGN. So, like, IGN will have, like, little news things or whatever, and then on YouTube they'll put them up there. But a lot of times they'll put, like, an image of, like, teasing the art, like, the article or or video coming out or whatever and youtube will like on the app not on the apple tv but on the app will pop will pop up like a popular comment Mm -hmm. and the first the comment that showed which made me laugh i was i should have taken a screenshot and sent it to you guys was uh it said you know uh halo uh 
Halo TV series canceled after two seasons, and the comment was, uh, that took two seasons too long. And that made me giggle. I figured it would. Yeah. And then the best, and the other, uh, another one I saw um, on their post on, I think, Instagram, one of the comments was, uh, um, of course, you post a picture of him with his helmet taken off. I was like, <laughs> uh, giggles. Yeah, it definitely was a defi- de- de- divisive, de- divisive, whatever it is, whatever yeah, that word that's is. That's a good way of putting uh, it. Show. I honestly, I'm the type of person that tries to take things as they are, they are given. Uh, you know, what are you honestly going to, like, I know in general what you would have wanted it out of a, a Halo, and I, I understand that uh, to a certain extent, me as well. But when you get into properties like this, do you really want something to just be a one for one uh, retelling of the story that you already have? And honestly, Halo as a whole doesn't exactly have the greatest story. In general, it gets really convoluted after like Halo Three, or even Halo Two, maybe. Uh, definitely after uh, Halo Three. Definitely after Halo Three. So trying to to break something and bring something else to the to the series and be, I would say, a little bit more cohesive within its own series is is something that would have been that was to me a bit refreshing and a different take on things. Uh, I will agree that it's like, hey, you know, you took Master Chief's helmet off like almost in the first episode. It wasn't the the greatest thing to do, and then keep him out of the par- power armor for most of the first season. I yeah. if I recall right, the, like later half of it, yeah. You know, maybe not a great choice, but I mean, honestly, physically, he can't be in that armor the whole entire time, right? He is in the game. He is in the game, but you're always playing just like the action part of the game like none of the downtime of the game that's the weird dichotomy of to me at least of the game like he's not always in combat he has to be other times where he's out of combat and not in his armor and and Uh, i understand that but also like i don't i don't want that though like in in like no i don't think i wanted a one for one like i don't want them to try to like figure out a way to shoot like the game that way but like I would have liked them to sh- to have the 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 show focused in the like I know this was like a splinter universe like this oh this is what could have happened if like you know Master Chief wasn't Master Chief or whatever um but like I would have liked them to base it in the battle of the games like you know like and then tell the story of everything after because like the fall of reach is one thing right because like you get all these like all these different spartans and things like that that's cool but like it need to be more of a war based show versus a humanity type based show and that's the one thing i think i would agree with you on there there was a bit especially in the first season the, the second season got a bit more away from it but the first season uh was too much focus on too many other characters that we didn't really care about yeah yeah I, w- I will agree with that uh i did personally like the uh i guess it'd be more of an introspective of like what it is to be master chief because even in the even in the show they really ramp into it in the second season where they show him uh as more of like a like a war hero type thing he's on banners and stuff like that you know be like master chief he's the propaganda tool he's the propaganda tool and it's his you know trying to understand what it is to be human once he's interacted with these uh alien uh uh, devices and whatnot so i think it had potential because they ended the second season right there on the uh on the, the halo ring and it looked gorgeous, and it looked like it could have been something that uh, would have been fun. They, I think, they even entered. I think they introduced the the first. Uh, what was it? Guilty Spark or whatever it was. The the first. Uh, yeah. Of the 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 whatchamacallits, whatever they're. I can't remember what they exactly they're called. Uh, of the Halo. Uh, so I think it, it it could have been interesting, and maybe at this point, like, yeah, we set up all this other stuff. And we could have now just transitioned into a more 
because now we are, like I said, we are on the Halo, and it's like, yeah, he's going to spend more, he would have probably spent more time in his power armor, would have spent more time going after things and whatnot. Uh, we probably could have gotten a more Master Chief focused thing, uh, but I guess we won't know because it's not it's not happening. It got canceled. Yeah. Um, you know, it's called Halo the TV show, and it never actually had a Halo until the last episode. Last episode of season two. Very true. Like they well, no, the last episode. I mean, yes. <laughs> It was technically the last episode, <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it sucks because, like, obviously, like, you know, we want something like that to be, but but being because it was such a departure from what everyone wanted, like, what, not, I don't think everyone wanted, I don't know what everyone even thinks they wanted, but, like, it just felt like such a departure from like the actual game the game the, the story of the game yeah because the story of the game was war and that's like that's why like, it should have been like a band of brothers type of like show where like it was like you form this group of of you know uh soldiers along with master chief and it is there literally like they're struggling of uh, and you could have a lot of inner like uh, smaller characters and cannon fodder in and out of it as they as they they venture forth until going to an end point of whatever it happens to be, be it you know rescuing or freeing their fucking fellow people or whatever it happens to be. It, I'm not developing a story right now, but yeah. that would have been a way better use of it. And you could have limited Master Chief's involvement in it until larger battle pieces, and you could have more focused on the soldiers like you do in like war movies and war TV shows like the Pacific band of brothers, uh, even fury. We can leave out the whole, like really uncomfortable potential rape scene. Uh, but like that kind of like grittiness and like that type of world. Cause like, that's what made the, 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 the web shows that much better is they were war based. They were based in the, the games that we wa- that we played. We loved playing was all about, the war between the covenant and the humans and eventually the forerunners and obviously the flood and all that fun stuff. Uh, but like you could have had a cool thing where like part of a couple episodes of season one could have been venturing them into that area of, of a halo where the flood was released and you could have had horror themed episodes, you know, like very, very alien heavy episodes of like, when I say alien, alien like really Scott alien heavy, you know what I mean? Like, or aliens, really, because they would have been action-y uh, versus just dispensable. But you could have had that, like, the the threat of the this unknown entity that we're already fighting these aliens that we don't understand their motives yet, other than the fact they just start attacking the shit out of us. Um, but then you have this force that even the Covenant are terrified of, you know, as a uh, as we later find out as is a as a kind of a bioweapon defense thing for the Halo, um, which was terrifying. Like, it was just... The, it was one of my favorite things about that that game is, like, when they introduced the Flood, you're just like, this is fucking scary. It really is. Because um, it was like... It was, you know, it was like everything was in the dark because you're in that swampy area and it's all, sh- it's all shadowy and, like, you hear those noises and you're like... I'm gonna Which is funny pants. that uh, they introduced that. I remember that level quite well because I remember playing through that 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 level and thinking, "Wow, this this ramped up to something that I love and was so much fun." And only to later find out that so many people hated that level. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "How could you not love that level?" It was basically horses. playing like uh, aliens. Like it just grabbed, just pulled out a shotgun and just started running through things. I thought it was so much fun, and then just later fall, uh, finding out that so many people was so weird to me those people suck uh those those are the people who hated odst so i loved odst ODST. that was a that was a quite the game to just sit there and tell a story it was difficult don't get me wrong but it was it was quite the game to tell a story and that and that's the kind of thing is like odst should have been kind of what they did with the show is they should have had it and the master chief was that like 
mythical figure that's always kind of like looming. Mm-hmm. But like he's he's like he's with them, but like he's like on kind of on his own. Mm-hmm. And, but like these dudes are like in the shit, and like that would have made it more like a lot better. And then you know like whatever. But like it just that's to me the Halo TV show. And I can't say what it would have been under Peter Jackson and, and Neil Bonkamp and stuff like that. But like to me, that's what they should have tried to do with it. But but instead they try to make like a Game of Thrones type world where like they're like, hey, like we're gonna uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna expand on stuff that nobody fucking cares about, mm-hmm. right? Like I I get it. You want to know like more about Master Chief's past or whatever, right? Cool. But really that part of like the games were like the lackluster to me is like, I don't care. Like, okay. Yeah. I understand you want to involve like a, a mythos behind him, but really having him be that, like, was it, what was the web show? Was it fall of reach with the young kids? And it was like yeah. at the, the, the training no, camp was, base. It, was, it wasn't fall of reach. It was, uh, because I don't think they were on reach, but I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. You remember they were they, they were younger and they were like they were they, they were, were the cadets they yeah. were at a training facility they were going through training and then suddenly like the covenant it attack happens yeah the covenant comes it invades ODST drops in but for some reason this little group of, of kids was like the last bit left oh they couldn't make it to the space elevator in time yeah space elevator got uh, got taken out and then out of nowhere uh, which I will I will say to your point like that that is a quintessential halo story because it is really cool to see that early on in this uh world which i think does take place in the games because it does link to halo 3 i want to say it's either halo 3 or halo 4 i can't remember yeah something like that but basically that even early on in the show they're they're given video that's not supposed to be released of something that's going on yeah and some sort of super soldier that you don't know really much about because that at that is, point the the Spartan program wasn't like a well-known thing well it was also dis- it was also dis- dissolved dissolved by that point uh, but it was it does have that is that is the quintessential show that does have that like everything looks in peril and then when see- things seem their bleakest, Boom! You know, there's Master Chief. A, a little, a literal god amongst men comes down and just fucking wrecks shop, and you're like, yes, yes, dude. Pulls them out, and yeah, just fights. Um, what the fuck is the name of that show? Uh, I could probably. Well, I think the all of Halo you Web Show. Nope, not, not the TV series. Not the TV series. Let's see. <laughs> Not the TV action. series. Live action. Uh, um, let's see. Uh, was it Forward Until Dawn? Forward that... Until Dawn. That's what it was. Yep. Oh, wait. No. Yep. Hold on. Nightfall. Yeah. No. No, Nightfall was the one with... Is that the Nightfall one Michael Coulter? Was the PlayStation one. That was Michael Coulter. Uh, no, not PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. X- it Xbox. was Forward Until Dawn because... That was the name of the ship, if I recall right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, that's the one. The series yeah. plot uh, occurring in the early days of the Human Covenant War, uh, 2526, revolves around Thomas Lanksy, a young cadet at the, uh, whatever, the Cabrillo, sure, Cor- Corbulo, whatever, Academy of Military Science, um, and how John 117 inspired him to eventually become a leader. Lasky is also a prominent character in Halo 4. Yeah, so it was leading up to Halo 4. So it was Halo 4. Yeah. And then there was Nightfall, which was the moment of Michael Coulter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then obviously the now-canceled uh, Halo TV series, which, you know, it's been a long time development for... seems to be fucking forever. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's that's all I had for this week. Well, I would like to talk about The Boys. Let's do it. I watched the, uh, uh, apparently the season finale last night. Apparently? You, well, you didn't know it, it was the season so, finale? I didn't know. So uh, to, to get off the subject of the boys real quick, uh, and then we'll get back on it. Uh, 
we all know how sometimes I can get a little not wanting to watch shows, we'll say. Uh, so, like, last weekend, I finally had the gumption to go, like, okay, I watched the newest episode of The Boys. What else haven't I watched in a while that I did enjoy that I can, like, you know, I can watch? Uh, one of them was Carnival Row. And so I watch it, and I'm and like, wow, that had a really happy ending. What the fuck? Is that, was that the end of the show? Holy fuck, that was the end of the show. <laughs> uh, and then there was something else I watched that was, that again, it was just like, wait, was that it? That, that seemed to like sum up the story and then found out yeah, that, yeah, that was, that was the, the series finale. And it's like, holy shit. And so coming into this week, like watching it and then watching how it ended, uh, it was like, that feels like a very season finale ending to me. And I went and looked it up and it was like, yep, that was the season finale. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what do you want to talk about? Um, that was very Cody Rhodes of you. Um, so I intentionally didn't watch the last three episodes so I could binge watch them because I was like super excited about all the like all the nonsense I was hearing about the the final episode or the the season the season finale. I almost said series finale, season finale. Uh, and the, obviously the fact that like they're they're actually planning season five to be the last season. So like obviously a lot of shit is being set up for what is going to be the finale of the series. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to avoid any type of spoilers, which everybody's really good, by the way. I don't know why it is of like not really spoiling the boys stuff. I, on, I don't know on about news. on Twitter or anything, uh, but on Reddit, people were just wanting to spoil things. Like oh, yeah. That. Don't go to Reddit for that kind of stuff unless you really want it. But yeah, it's like because a lot of times like um, you'll get like and I'm talking there's there's people who spoil like like little stuff or whatever, but like not like big story plots like all that fun stuff. And anything like article wise, it comes up of an episode. I haven't watched. I was like, nah, I'm just gonna, not going to read it. Uh, so I was avoiding it that, but a lot of people weren't like posting like images or whatever of things happening. But so I was like, all right, I'm going to wait. I'll watch the last, uh, uh, three episodes. So six, seven and eight, I'll wait to watch those all as one. And obviously this past week, uh, episode eight dropped the season, the season four, uh, finale. And I was like, all right, I'm going to watch them now. Uh, pages at work. I don't have to worry about her not wanting to watch this because she's mm-hmm. literally four seasons behind. Um, so I was like, "All right, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna just I'm, that's that's it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this soak in because I I'm I'm waiting for like this big something or other, right? Like hell blue. And obviously the morning that I decided to watch it was the day after it premiered. And that was when they were like, everyone's like, Hey, the boys are putting a, uh, you know, a violence, dis- uh, discrimin- disc- or disclaimer thing before it because of contents of real life and the sh- the, what's happening in the show. And I was like, okay, I understand that. Like we kind of knew that was happening though, because like the plot of season four was the potential assassination of a leader, you know what I mean? A political leader. So like, I understand that. Um. Anyways, but that's that aside. So I started with episode six, and we're not gonna break down everything that happened in it. But there's these little key things that like I thought were fucking rad because like the last episode, which probably shouldn't have been the last episode I watched. I should have wait, waited for the last four because episode five was like literally heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. Like with Simon Pegg's character. Spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. Simon Pegg's character, who Huey's dad, uh unfortunately passing away uh, due to an accident he had and then being hospitalized and then, you know, Temp V being put into him and his horrific uh, powers, which, by the way, I thought was very clever that they that uh, him and his son's powers are very similar. Of, like, teleportation and, yeah. like, being able to move through things. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was kind of cool, like, a familial type thing, you know? Because, like, they kind of explained a little bit with, like, Homelander and his son, like, Homelander... And his son are, are, as of we right now, we know very, very similar. Um, we may get more of that in season five of how similar they are because they seem to be pretty indestructible, very strong. Uh, I believe they both can fly. I don't think Ryan's very good at it yet. 
Uh, and I don't think Ryan's shotting lasers out of his fucking eyeballs yet. Right? I want to say there was a scene in season three where he was trying to teach him to do yeah. it. Yeah. So, yeah, because that was like that was kind of like the, the the approach to it. Yeah, I don't think it's happened yet, if I remember correctly. Anyways, so I like th- I think that was pretty cool. Um, the whole thing with Huey's mom and like that whole backstory, I was like, this is fucking rough, dude. Like, this is like, this is like, this is most like drama. And I'm not saying that badly that they've had in any of the episodes yet so far of any of the seasons too. Like it was the most like definitely dramatic of all of them. Uh, and like, there's like stuff with Frenchie. Even this season was was pretty was pretty rough with him. Like literally being in a relationship with the guy who's he murdered his entire family. Um, that was fucking wild. Um, Kamiko, uh, her whole backstory is obviously was elaborated on this, but nothing was as heart wrenching as all the shit he was going through, especially with the fact that like obviously what he's doing with the boys and his relationship with Annie and like the. Uh, publicity or publicly uh divulging that uh him and her had an abortion you know that sort of thing that was like i was like that's just like i don't want to say icing on the cake but like that was the icing on the iceberg you know what i mean like it was just a little bit and then like the whole family drama i was like holy shit this is like hardcore and i was like all right cool so they give him the temp v i was like oh she's gonna get powers what's gonna happen and then like it wasn't a happy ending like it was fucking like traumatizing like level of like I was like damn like Eric Kripke out here fucking taking shots you know what I mean like damn what's wrong with you uh but I think it was super rad so like that was like that was where like I was like all right I'm gonna wait and watch this last one so I watched them and like just the amount of nonsense that was like the whole thing with uh with um Tech Knight being like a sex praved fucking lunatic uh was awesome to to experience um, the, uh, what, what do they call him? The, um, the web spinner guy. Oh, uh, God, I don't remember now. Uh, God damn it. What was his name? Anyways, like, his whole setup was yeah. obviously it's a, it's a, it's a play on, on Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Uh, duh. But like the thing that got me that made me oh. fucking laugh so hard was the safe word. Oh yeah. And, like, I had seen something about uh, Zendaya being mentioned in the boys or whatever, right? The usage of that fucking word as a safe word for the guy who's literally Spider-Man mm-hmm. was fucking hilarious, dude. I was literally in tears laughing so hard when that butler's like, oh, by the way, the safe word Zendaya. I lost my shit, dude. Like, I was trying to scramble for the pause button on the remote to, like, get control because I knew I was going to miss some stuff. Uh-huh. Dude, I... Oh, my God, dude. I, was, I don't know why it was so funny to me, but it was, like, that shit was hilarious. Uh-huh. Uh, and I was just I, literally losing my mind of how fucking hilarious that shit was, dude. Uh, I'm trying to find out what his name was. It's Web something or other. It was Web something. And I do like the fact that his death was fucking horrific. Oh my god. That whole scene was just gross. He yeah. gets nervous and he just spits out the, the spider silk web stuff, but it was just disgusting. Ugh. Uh, where the hell is it? Uh, so, web Weaver. Yeah. Web Weaver. Web That's Weaver. what his name was. Yeah. Web Weaver. Yeah. Yeah. That whole scene was fucking hilarious, dude. Like the whole like sex dungeon thing instead of like he's like, You wanna see the Tech Knight cave? And I'm like, Oh shit, we're gonna see like all the cool fucking like technology that they talk about with him and he goes down there and it's literally just a sex dungeon, including a sex slave who is his former sidekick. Sidekick. And I was like in in red, by the way. Yeah. I was like yeah. oh, hilarious uh so that was great uh, i did not expect them to kill him uh but i was like that was a little bit uh, that was a little bit unexpected yes yeah i was like oh okay well i mean fuck that guy also like the guy's a giant piece of garbage oh yeah 
Um, but yeah, so that was fun. Uh, just hilarious. The whole Zendaya thing was so, so fucking perfect. Um, what else? Um, just in the season finale, like the whole thing with Ryan going against uh, Butcher and Mallory and end up killing Mallory, which was another shocking death. And I was like, um, it's one of those okay. things that you could see coming, though. Like, it was just... that. I don't know. That That's one of those... You could tell that, that Ryan, at least within the context of the show, obviously, was leaning more towards Butcher's side, but probably just needed a little bit more time. I mean, he sits there and says, you know, uh, I, just, I just need some time to think about this. And then she's about ready to just, like, trap him in there yeah. with Butcher... Uh, and gas them both just to knock them out. Uh, that had had she just probably let him go, he probably would have come back. And so it it would be more interesting because at this point in time, now he kind of sees that even the people that he thought he could trust outside of his dad, who's a big scary person, that is, you know, he's seen the, the scary side of, of Homelander. Uh, now he sees this other side of the people that he thought he could trust outside of that being just wanting to turn him into a weapon. Yeah. You know, so it'll be interesting to see where they go with Ryan's arc. Uh, and then it'll be interesting to see where they go with, uh, with butcher's arc because now he's not even really butcher anymore. He's a more extreme version of butcher. Yeah. 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 With, uh, uh, pretty gnarly, um, tumor. Yeah. Right. Like, because they kept they kept showing like the little crawly thing in his head or whatever, right? So you know, you know, it's not technically a tumor, but like it is a tumor, but it's like a super tumor. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then like the whole reveal of it, because you get a tease of it, um, during the the firecracker thing outside of the Starlighters mm-hmm. place, and then like Ezekiel, uh, basically like you know attacks him or whatever, and then all of a sudden like he wakes up with the fucking tinnitus and covered in blood and Ezekiel is literally repainting the inside of the RV. Um, and of course nobody sees it when it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're like, you get the reveal at the end when he fucking rips what's her face in half. And I was like, yeah. Uh, okay. Which did kind of remind me of one thing, uh, harking back at least to spider, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man one. It, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about because he starts uh, in, in in the boys, you know, he takes the V, he, he gets the superpowers, but now he has this tumor and you find out at least through the, this season that he's seeing people, yeah. you know, one of them being his wife and one of them being uh, Negan, uh, essentially, you know, and they, they, they are the, the two different splits of him where he's trying, where it's the nicer version of him uh, in his wife and then the, the more, you know, just burn the world and kill the all district. soups in, yeah. in Negan side of things. It reminds me a bit of, uh, of what they did kind of to uh, Doc Ock yeah. in Spider-Man 1 where basically when the inhibitor chip... Uh, Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2, sorry. Yeah, Spider-Man 1 was... Green Goblin. Well, it was Green Goblin? Okay, yeah. yeah. So Spider-Man 2, basically when the inhibitor chip gets destroyed, for some reason the AI that was is in is in the tentacles is able to basically influence uh, Doc Ock and drive him more towards uh, the, the evil over side of things. And that's, to me, the, the idea that I get that you get here that the tumor is affecting him uh he has the one side of his of his personality that is trying to keep him more human and uh less uh chaotic and whatnot but the the tentacle the the tumor is just like no man you're more powerful this way you're more powerful this way you know let's do it like this uh and he is given in to that side at least for now so it'll be interesting to see what they do with him in, in uh, the season five finale, or you know the, the final season. Yeah, yeah. I agree. yeah. Season four was just a uh, was just a wild ride of just like I, like I've said, I texted you multiple multiple times. You know, 
does art imitate life or does <laughs> or is it the reverse because there are so many things that are just like I it almost hits a little bit too real uh, yeah. too real world with what they're doing but uh, it was a very entertaining uh, season the, uh, and they just what there was one line that at the end the at the end of this, this the the episode when they're kind of basically like um announcing everything you know like what you know cuz after they take over and essentially firecracker has this line where she's says let's make america super again uh-huh and i was like mm-hmm. yeah are right. they going to have red massa hats Probably. next season cuz that's I do it. fucking I doubt it. hilarious they may make them blue but just because Homelander is more, his dominant color is blue, obviously. Um, but, dude, I was, I, I was like, that's so fucking smart, dude. It's so clever. It's clever. It's very much so a, uh, a commentary of on things that are happening right now, which is kind of a weird thing uh, to say and do, you know. Uh, yeah, I will say uh, to the the end, uh, uh, the final. Uh, final end of, of the, the season was uh, was pretty good too because they never really tell you what happened to Soldier Boy at the end of season three. He just kind of I remember the explosion happens and then he just kind of is gone. Yeah, they hinted at a little bit of it, like um, like oh you know blah blah blah, like you know whatever. But yeah, they don't really explain like what exactly they did. Mm-hmm. And like obviously, like you're like okay, and then to turn out that it was like the government took him. Because I thought it was going to be, like, a reveal, like, Mallory had taken him. Mm-hmm. And, like, she tried to put him in that super bunker thing. But then when they show, like, the new the new president shows Homelander, and I was like, oh, no. Yeah. That's yeah, worse. He's still alive. Yeah. He's still here. So where does this come into play? In next season will be interesting as well. If they somehow release uh, Soldier Boy, is he going to be still pissed off and, and willing to fight Homelander, you know? I mean, probably, because Homelander's kind of, like, like definitely going away from what even Soldier Boy was doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, definitely not the, the direct route, uh, or, you know, the or the, not a, uh, not a route he would have wanted, uh, especially his son to take, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it was pretty wild. And then, um, yeah, I, the other thing, too, I, I, I don't, I think I mentioned to you before when we were talking about the boys a couple weeks ago on the show. Like, I was like, man, when are they going to introduce the Gen V characters? Yes. In the season. Because, like, obviously, like, they set it up. Did you ever watch Gen, Gen V? I never finished it. Uh, I was maybe through episode four on okay. it. So at the end of that mm-hmm. season of Gen V, which I don't even know if they're doing a second season of Gen V since like they basically introduced the last them. Last I heard they were. Okay. Which but might I... still be part of that, I don't know. But anyways, at the end of season 1, this isn't a spoiler. Well, I mean it is, but not anymore cuz if you've seen Cuz they show up the characters, yeah. yeah. Uh they are they are essentially being like a bunch of them are being groomed to be mm-hmm. acolytes of Homelander. Mm-hmm. Uh because they're like there's definitely like a good set of the the characters from that show, and then there's the bad set of characters. Those characters show up in season uh, four's finale, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, okay, okay, all right, I see where we're going." Because then you can have the good ones be on the boys' side, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. just saying. Spoiler, I guess for f- or future spoiler. I don't know how that would work. If I'm correct, it's a spoiler. If I'm not correct, then I'm just an asshole. Uh, always an but asshole. It would make but. sense because you introduce the, those those characters at the end of this season. More than likely, you're not going to just abandon those characters going into the next season. Yeah. Like, you're not just going to be like, and they're off in another country doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just like the yeah. fact like they um, they have all these re- like reprising characters uh, come back and are essentially taking the boys down. Um, and then like, you know, like, and then Annie fucking finally, like she's like, right before they, it's so, so fucking classic dude. Like she finally like shows off that, Oh, my powers are back. You know, like yeah. I'm, 
She's accepting it. Yeah, she's saying she's back, and then like he gives her the nod, and she's fucking takes off. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, cool, that's fucking rad. That they, you know, it sucks that like those powers could have come in handy quite often. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just in the oh, and the other that I was bringing up the other thing that made me laugh so hard, uh, which is probably not the way to put it, but whatever. Oh, you'll get to it. You'll get the joke in a second yeah. when. The Deep was talking to the newest version of Black Noir, mm-hmm. um, and they're going over. He's like, I, he's like, he's, I want to, I quit. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't understand it because, like, he doesn't mm-hmm. understand what Black Noir is, and no one's really like telling him specifically what his motivation is or whatever. And yeah, then through the whole season, he was just like, "What's my motivation for doing this?" Like, like I don't... yeah, what is like, what is Black Noir's thing? Like, because every yeah. superhero has their thing, but like, what is Black Noir's thing? And then the Deep's like. The, like Black Noir or Noir, like his whole thing was like he loved murder. Mm-hmm. Like we'd go on a murder rampage and he'd have a mur- um, like a murder boner. Yes. And when they have that, when they're hunting down all the the people in Vought that would like, could potentially have information yeah, on, him, on him, and he fucking kills the like the other the other Ashley, and he goes, "Oh, murder boner." I mm-hmm. was fucking rolling. <laughs> Cause it finally like uh, the whole season, he just can't grasp what it is because no one's really told him anything about Black Noir, like other than he's not supposed to talk. Mm-hmm. And then you get to that point, and it's the the most least likely person to ever like really break down someone's character. The deep tells him, "No, bro, listen, it's all about he just loved murder so much so that he would have murder boners." And that comes to fruition at the end, and he's like, "Oh, murder!" But I was like, "This is what it means to be noir." Oh my god! It took him this long, and it just took a fucking literal idiot mm-hmm. to break it down. Simply like, of all these people who are supposed to know, because obviously black noir, the biggest thing is like, he's not the only black noir. Like they've had a mm-hmm. multiple replacements, right? But it's like in this show, he's not just a clone of Homelander. He's someone is put in a suit because it's an all black suit with no face or whatever right and so he's struggling the entire time to understand it and they're just like no just just be here and shut up and then it just takes that little like one line to tell him all about what his motivation needs to be and then it like comes to fruition at the end and I was like that is so funny like just in so many ways but also fucking hilarious uh, speaking of things that'll, that at least to me will be hilarious to see how they play out because uh, you mentioned about Ashley and uh, first off they they make that list of all the people within the building that have that could have dirt on them and yeah. they're like wait shouldn't Ashley be on this list? So shouldn't, shouldn't La- Ashley be number one on this list? Because uh, yeah she's the CEO and would actually have dirt on all of, on all of them so he writes out her name first off with two e's yeah uh and then just goes what's her last name and no one knows because no one cared enough about her exactly to even know what her last name is so then you even have the scene where where noir kills ashley and he's like isn't this the ashley that's not the ashley we're trying to kill she wasn't even on the list and he's like there are so many ashley's in this building uh how can you tell them all apart or basically whatever but then it cuts to, or it had already cut to the fact that she ran out when found out that, that when she was overhearing that they were going to basically kill everybody, she yeah. runs and takes uh, the temp V. And it seemed to me like it was going to affect her brain in some way. Yeah, it was because it was like um, fucking with her head when she was transforming that they cut away. Obviously, didn't tell us what was going on with it. So I wonder if she's going to be, like, super intelligent or something in the final season, which would be kind of hilarious because she goes from this, like, not exactly the most intelligent character in the world, and now she's a CEO puppet. And if she went to basically turn her into MODOK, would be kind of a, uh, of a hilarious arc yeah. for her to go through and be this, like, super intelligent being. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with her uh, character in the next season. Ashley Barrett is her name. Is her Barrett? And then, of course, I want to see what happens to Adrian. I'm sorry. Ashley Barrett uh, is her character's name in the show. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Jess Bradley was the character in the comic book. Um, but then obviously they changed it in the adaptation. But sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that was, that was basically it. Uh, then I want to see, like, obviously A Train took his trip out, uh, left for parts unknown to get away from everything. Obviously, shit's going down, so it'll be interesting to see if, uh, if or when, when what happens with uh, A Train uh, coming. I'm sure he's going to come back and actually be more of a superhero in the the good guy sense than the bad guy sense. I just want to see what they what they do with him. Uh, speaking of which, because uh, we're almost uh, at time here, yep. uh, that was another thing I did last weekend. Is I watched. A, do you ever watch the movie Smile? Yeah. Uh, it was an okay movie. Yeah. I will say that I didn't really care much for the ending of it, but it was funny to sit there and watch it, and I'm just sitting there going, "That dude looks familiar." <laughs> Why do I know that guy? Yeah. And then it just dawns on me. That's fucking A-Train. It is oh, my God. A-Train. That's awesome. Um, uh, yeah. Obviously, this was before The Boys. The Smile came out. Well, no, this was, that was before, during The Boys. Was, yeah. During The Boys, yeah. Because this because uh, Smile came out in 2002, I want to say it was. Nope, 2022, maybe. Sorry, 2022. Yeah. Sorry, 2022. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesse T. Uh, Usher, I, sir. I kind of say 2002 because I could have swore this came out like 10 years ago. This movie came out 10 years ago. Uh, but obviously I was wrong even when we looked it up. I, I believe it was 2022 was when it came out. So it was just uh, just after The Boys had started. Uh, or season uh, sorry, season two of The Boys. Uh, Somewhere yeah. around there. I don't know. COVID yeah, happened and then things get weird. Uh, Somewhere in there, yeah. Somewhere in there. But then, like, the episode goes on, and then another character pops up, and I'm like, I I know this character as well. Who the fuck is this? I cannot think of her for the life of me. And then Adam is, because uh, Adam was watching too, and he's like, that's Carla from Scrubs. And I was like, oh, yeah. It's Carla. Carla and A-Train and Smile. Yep. Uh, yeah. Again, an okay movie. Uh, it wasn't bad. Uh I would say if you want to watch that type of movie, though, go go and watch uh, Denzel Washington. Denzel Washington had a much better version of this movie. Come on, what's it called, Joe? I even looked it up, and I'm trying to read the Fallen. Fallen. Very good, Joe. Fallen. Yeah, Fallen. Great, great uh, movie, by the way. Great, great fucking movie. John Goodman Same, is similar fucking terrifying. Present, uh, similar uh, 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 story. But just a so much better uh, done movie, in my opinion. Uh, the ending, because uh, if you would have like the whole, my whole problem with the ending, uh, of spoiler, not a tangent. We'll wrap this up right after this. Mm-hmm. My whole problem with that, the ending of that is, the whole premise of the the thing, that is the the the, the entity that that's doing this to people, is mm-hmm. unseen. Yeah. So to give it physical form. Even in the, I mean, obviously, like not a true physical form because it was just the monstrous uh, embodiment of her mother or whatever. But it's like you don't. That doesn't need to be the thing. Like I get it because at the end, like it, it's not like it. You know, obviously, it's the ending is not the ending of it. It's the ending of her. Blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and like it gets out or whatever. But it's like, bro, like you don't need like that was like this weird like it just so, took such a turn from like what the movie was doing. Mm-hmm. to do that and I was like I don't I don't like that no like, I, like and there was too much uh, it, I, I I will admit I had a little bit of a problem the similar problem in the boys as well the final final episode there where uh, at least in the in the movie smile she's like yeah but this is my my mind or whatever and she hits the thing and it, it lights on fire and she's like yeah like you get the whole idea that she was actually going there to basically kill herself yeah and and that would end the cycle yeah but obviously it fucks with the mind and which was which was great it was like a back and forth but then she hits it with a you know a, the, the lamp lights it on fire and walks out of the house the house is burning and she's like yeah i beat it and i'm like no nope. no that makes no sense whatsoever why would you why would you think that that that's the way to beat it and obviously, 
she wakes back up, you know, in the, in the house. And it's like, yeah, you, like, I don't understand why you would think that, that that's the only, that, that was a perfectly valid way of killing the thing. You don't see it uh, dead, which, uh, my final thing to, to mention about the boys is the same thing with the chameleon. Uh, they basically, she, the chameleon gets choked out and then they're like, yeah, that was a tough fight, but it's dead now. I was like, no, smash its head in. That's like yeah, the need... only way to tell that it's going to die. Like, you don't know if it could just like fake it. Yeah. You know? Also, you just made it pass out. You didn't break its neck. You exactly. didn't like, I was like, something I was like, you it. need to like this motherfucker just took bullet after bullet from high caliber rifles. And you're just like, yeah. all right, cool. I choked it out. I'm super. So I choked it. I'm like, Annie is the least super of the supers that you can possibly have fighting on your side, right? A, her powers aren't even around. She's just, like, strong. I get it. But, like, no. You need to... She's passed out. You need to chop that that thing's head off. I don't even know if it's a boy or a girl, because the first time you see it in the show, it's a boy. But it doesn't even mention it, too. Like, it, it mentions it early in the episode that's like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, nah, bro, like... You need so that was my only need, problem with the final episode, where it's just like, no, you don't know if it's dead. You like, need to, you need to, chop that thing up in bits. You need to smoosh its brain. You need mm-hmm. to lock the fucking torso bits in like boxes and put them in like the fucking middle of mm-hmm. m- multiple deserts. Like you need to like make sure this thing's fucking dead because dead. choking it out that just means it doesn't have air. Exactly, but it can still be alive. Yeah, like that thing took way too much damage to think a, a fucking chokehold is going to get it to fucking not be around any longer. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I got. All right, cool, brother. Um, that's it for this week's episode of Comes Naturally. We have been... Joe. I have been Cody, and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Bye. <laughs>